All right. So we're, this, there's a, a lot that goes into this. Um, you know, knowledge is one of the more complex uh, components in Salesforce, and so there's a lot to cover today. Uh, the upside of there being a lot to cover is you're, you're going to learn a lot of things uh, that are useful across the entire uh, service cloud uh, application. I mean, there's there's so much of this that applies other places. And I'm going to kind of walk you through the knowledge setup process because uh, almost everywhere where you're doing the setting up is also the places that you're doing the configuration. So uh, we're going to walk through just kind of the knowledge management process, creating articles, publishing, updating, uh, understanding who can see what, uh, all the good things that go into uh, helping you create sort of this uh, brain for your support team. Uh, and that's really how I like to think about it. You know, it's, this is sort of everyone working together uh, so that you can leverage the knowledge of your entire staff. And, you know, what happens a lot of times with support desks, and this is, this is good and bad, right, is that you end up with uh, little tribes of folks that really understand specific areas um, and if you don't get those questions to those people, uh, you're not able to provide answers back to the customer. Uh, and so knowledge helps you centralize that information. It helps you standardize the responses you provide out. Uh, it really helps when you onboard new people. Um, you know, they're, they're not sitting there completely lost having to ask every single time a, a customer question comes in. Uh, well, what should I say to this? What should I say to that? You know, this, this helps you kind of share that brain uh, that, you know, people, once you've been somewhere five, six, seven years, oh, well, yeah, hey, all the answers, you know, the answers come easy, you've got standard language, you've got all these things built up, but, you know, when you come in fresh, you don't have that available to you. And when you encounter new problems, how do I, you know, how do we come in and, and solve this? This is, you know, this is really the core of the support process, you know, if you're, if you're doing things right. So, uh, so we're, you know, this is your guys are essentially going to be, you know, entrusted with managing the brain of your support process. Mm -hmm. um, so, Salesforce uh, Service Cloud is uh, KCS verified. Uh, it's uh, best practice, uh, and it's essentially centered around four concepts. And you know, like I said uh, earlier about knowledge management being at the center of your uh, support process. So this integration of the creation and maintenance of knowledge into the problem solving process is sort of at the core of all that. And you'll see as we step through this, you know, the idea is not that uh, you too go out and write every article, provide the standard language for the whole team. It really is intended to be something that everybody participates in. If, if a customer problem comes in, and somebody uh, takes the time to put together language, they go out maybe to a SME, pull that language in, and work on it. When they close that case, there ought to be an option for them to add to the overall knowledge base uh, so, that, so that everyone can leverage that. And, and that's, you know, that's a part of this, this idea that you know, as we encounter problems, we build solutions, and then we incorporate them into the overall solving process. And that, uh, you know, that content that we build uh, that we're able to understand, are people using it? Uh, you know, where should we focus our efforts in terms of maintaining it? You want to be able to understand both what are people looking at, what are people using, how good is it? Uh, you want people to participate in rating the content um, and providing feedback on, you know, what they didn't have. You see a lot of times, if you, don't, if you don't work that part of the process, what happens is you get a bunch of people that they take the first half of your article and then they're constantly having to add to it or, you know, that everybody's doing the same type of pruning to things, uh, and nobody's, you know, managing it for the betterment of the community at large. Um, and then I've kind of touched on some of these other things, developing a knowledge base of collective experience. Uh, that's, you know, at the heart of this. You know, we're trying to get uh, all the things that you know after five or six years on the job into the hands of somebody that's been on the job six weeks so that they're not sitting there lost. Uh, and so, the, you know, the, the whole team doesn't suffer for it. Uh, and then one of the things that, that's really neat uh, about the Salesforce implementation of KCS uh, is this focus on collaboration, sharing, and improving. And, uh, you know, I know uh, you guys have all been uh, great in working with me with the chatter. Uh, and I, I try to chatter a lot 
with uh, folks when I do implementation work because it gets people engaged and involved in using it and it can be a really powerful tool uh, if you if you use it correctly and so that's something we're going to I'm going to show you how how to enable it um, and you can use uh, the same way that you enable it's called uh, fee tracking the same way that, that we're going to enable that for uh, your for knowledge articles you can do that for anything uh, within the system so that you can uh, watch how things evolve over time so <clears throat> There are a lot, I, you know, I said earlier, there's a lot that goes into knowledge, uh, but there are really, there are three really key things uh, that you need to be aware of, and those are data categories, article types, and articles. Uh, so data categories uh, are sort of, uh, that's the, uh, you know, you can, obviously you can think of it as a taxonomy um, that's uh, up to five levels of deep categorization, uh, the types of information that uh, you're trying to put in front of your of your users, uh, uh, both internally and externally, and the, you know the idea is that this is to be a help for them in finding things. Uh, you, you know, as I'm sure uh, many people here have felt the frustration of trying to find things that other people have categorized. Um, so you want to be a little bit careful uh, <clears throat> about how you use categories to to surface information that you're putting in front of your users. Article types, uh, this gives you a way to kind of change the visibility, change the look and feel of, uh, of some of these different uh, items that, that you're collecting the information in. So you may have a uh, an FAQ article type uh, that's publicly available uh, that has uh, maybe different sections to it than uh, a how-to article, you know, which might be more process focused, or uh, a, something, a standard language articles that internal users uh, are using uh, just to have background information about particular problem areas. And then, of course, you've got your specific articles, which are at the heart of this whole thing. That's the repository for the actual information that you're trying to get out in front of uh, the customer to solve their problem. <clears throat> 